Paul, how much have you been paying each week for your daughter, each month? Do you know? How much has he been paying? I'll ask you. £50 a week, George. £50 per week. £100 a fortnight. £200 per month. Sir, you are on benefits, correct? I am, yeah. I have conducted an assessment. Let me ask you, how much money at the end of the month, bearing in mind the 200 you're paying to your daughter, do you have for yourself? Almost nothing, correct? That's right, yeah. In other words, you have very little for yourself. What you get, you give to your daughter because you love her. Now, madam, you are claiming that despite that informal agreement, there were two months where he didn't pay. And consequently, you want the sums for that two months, right? Yes, George. What evidence do I have he didn't pay that two months? I haven't got any, George. Well, that's not helpful. It's the first part of your claim. The next part of your claim <coughs> is for a broken tablet. You say that's Paul's fault. What did he do to the tablet and whose tablet is it? It's my daughter's tablet, George. Well, it's not yours. Let's have a look at it. Why is it his fault that the iPad is damaged? Because he, uh, he stood on it. Did you stand on the iPad on purpose? Uh, did you have a tantrum one day, throw your daughter's iPad on the floor and decide to have a two-year-old tantrum? It now, wasn't sir, on purpose. Cannot, exactly so. Part of your condition is that you have an associated health problem, which is amnesia, temporary yeah. amnesia connected to epilepsy. That's right, yeah. And so you, you readily accept that it is possible that you could have caused um, damage to property, but it wouldn't necessarily be your fault or on purpose. Is that right? In other words, it's possible that you've damaged this property and other property. Um, so probably... you've had amnesia four times that you've stood on it then? I probably, probably broke it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of it. Now, I asked you, for the past seven years, you've been paying a massive proportion of your income to your daughter. Cos uh, it's my, my only daughter, and it's my only daughter, she's my life, really. She's a very good mum. Bev, he's just called you a very good mum. She's... Oh, that's different to what he said, uh, to a doctor. Look, he's just said it. He's just said it. You seem to bristle when I said he had little left at the end of each month once he'd paid for his daughter, which is good. He has, though, George. What, how's he got? Hundreds? Thousands? I'm looking at him. Yeah. Is he a secret Richard Branson? Does he have a private jet somewhere that I can't see? He has a small top-up to pay, George, and he's got £80, 80 pound for a fortnight. So he's lying there, eh, really. What's he lying about? Look, he's got nothing. I didn't say he had nothing. I said, when I look at his income, I can see that he does his best to pay a significant portion to his daughter, look at me, madam, through you, because he says you're a very good mum. Well, he's contradicted himself then, Judge. In what sense? He told the doctor a few years ago that, in his opinion, I was an unfit parent. You don't believe that, do you? I... You don't believe that, do you? What? Didn't stop that you she's saying... an unfit parent. Didn't she's... stop you saying it, though, did it? I probably said it years ago, but... I admit, I probably said it years ago, but... Uh, no. Nah. You'd like to apologise? I... Uh, yes? Sincerely. And, um, she's oh, the best mum in the world for my, my daughter. You're going to take that apology? You should. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel right now. That's an order.